So my session um, is on how to build your brand with blogging. So my name is Kashai Ramathan. I will do a formal introduction once we get started. But just want to make sure that you know that you're in the uh, branding session around blogging. And so I picked this session because we actually had a little conflict where there was like all of the blogging sessions looked exactly the same. So we were trying to figure out how to be customized so that you're actually getting something from each one. So I decided to put my own personal unique spin on it with branding because branding is my subject matter expertise. That's what I do on brand strategist. So without further ado, let's talk about what we're going to get from the next 45 minutes or so. Um, we're going to talk about the steps for launching a successful blog. We're going to talk about the essential items you need on your website. So even if you are a blogger already, um, we'll talk about you know what may be missing from that. Okay. We will talk about how to create a consistent posting schedule. So I know I just had a conversation around you have all of these blog topic ideas, but when it comes to sitting down and writing it, scheduling it, posting it, that's a different story. Um, and then we'll talk about how to gain influence as a new blogger. So that's the followers, the sponsored posts, getting paid for blogging. We'll kind of wrap up with that stuff. So let's get introduced. As I said, my name is Kashara Moffitt. I am the founder of a company called the KSM Group. We are a career consultancy and career strategy firm. So for individuals who are maybe in the corporate nonprofit sector, we provide career coaching, resumes, LinkedIn profiles, looking for jobs on social media. And when it comes to businesses, we provide business strategy services. So branding, social media, uh, content marketing, email marketing, all of that stuff. Um, I am a blogger myself, so my blog is called thisishermovement.com. I started it in 2013. Um, it's grown into its own movement. We host a monthly Twitter chat that averages anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 tweets within an hour. Um, we hosted our own conference this past June called the Hustle Hardaway Summit, which was an extension of the blog, which was sold out here in Pittsburgh, so that was really exciting. Um, I am originally from Chicago. I've been in Pittsburgh since 2013 as well. Um, I moved here to work at PNC. That's where I started my career in human resources. So I do have an MBA focused in HR and finance, which helps with being a business owner because I understand that stuff. Um, but now I'm kind of on a different path, so a different career trajectory altogether. So let's get started with blogging. So first things first. Pick the topic. That is the hardest thing. So many people that I talk to, I want to start a blog, and then I say, well, what is it about? And they list 20 things, which is great, and it's so ambitious. But there's so much discipline that goes into having a blog that when you start off with that bid, it's going to be very overwhelming to produce content, especially at that fast of a rate. So pick one topic, and then put your unique spin on it. So I know another thing is people get concerned because, well, there's – already 2,000 fashion blogs out there. Okay, well, what makes it special for you? Is your blog for career women? Is it for college students? Is it for teenagers? Um, so my blog is on career development and personal branding. There's thousands of blogs in both of those categories, and I put my spin on it because of, I know who my target audience is. And my target audience is very much um, millennial women who want to climb the corporate ladder but have this entrepreneur spirit within them. They want to start something of their own. They may not want to leave their nine to five, but they do want to have their own little side hustle. So my blog caters to both sides of their interests, and that's my unique spin. So I will very much talk to you about networking, business cards, elevator pitches, but everything is in pink, so you still feel like it's fun and exciting for you. So it's a nice mix. So first, pick your topic, put your unique spin on it. Then from there, define your audience. So I know in the keynote, if you were in the keynote, it talked about um, you know, understanding who your audience is and can really connect with them. You have to define your audience down in detail. So one thing I recommend doing is creating a target customer profile or a target reader profile where you make up a person, give them a name, find a picture from like a magazine or pictures, give them a face, and just write about this person because then it's easier to create your content around this person. So here's some examples. You want to be able to define the age range, the gender, their location and income bracket, interests, hobbies, and challenges. So let me tell you why. Age range and gender gives you an idea of where they may hang out social media-wise, right? There's a lot of statistics out there that says who's on Twitter the most, who's on Instagram, who's on Facebook. That tells you where you may want to spend advertising dollars if you decide to do sponsored posts, right? Location and income bracket is important in terms of targeting Facebook ads and Instagram ads. You can actually target say, I don't want this to be seen in people in Pittsburgh or California or Chicago, you can do that. You may want to know where they are. And even if you can't get that detail where, oh, I know they live in Pittsburgh, maybe you just know they live in urban metropolitan areas, right? 
income bracket is important when it comes to um, if you're promoting something, right? So if your demographic is primarily in a um, middle middle income, maybe like forty to sixty thousand dollar range, you may not want to work with the higher end luxury brand that sells five thousand dollar shoes to the person that can't afford it. So you want to make sure you understand where they are income range, like income bracket wise. Interest in hobbies, also helps with promotions. And then the most important piece when it comes to being a content creator is understanding their challenges. Your content should address their problems. Your content should make their life easier. Even when it comes to, I don't want to figure out what I have to wear to work every day. Your blog should help me figure that out. I don't know when it's time to leave my next job. Is your blog going to help me out? I don't know what to make for dinner tonight. Will your blog help me out? You have to figure out what their challenges are and address it. Um, one thing I look for all the time when it comes to food blogs is I need a food blog that will help me lose weight but still keep my food with flavor. Those types of things, like people have those very unique challenges. I want to lose weight, I want my food to taste good. Do you blatantly say this is what my blog will address? That will help keep them and engage them. Now, the next step is writing your blog description. And a lot of people say, well, why am I writing a blog description before I build a website or I take a platform? Because I think that if you can't describe what your blog is about in a paragraph, then you probably shouldn't have it. You have to be able to articulate what this blog is about. And that helps you to understand, do I even know enough about this topic to produce content consistently? A big issue with people is they stop posting because they run out of things to say. I'm a firm believer in write about the things you're an expert in and then expand as your knowledge continues to grow. So write your blog description next. This will come in handy. From there, write six to ten posts before you launch. Again, this is going to test. Do you know enough information to produce content consistently? The second piece is when you launch a new blog, Launching with one post is one of the biggest mistakes new bloggers make because it takes more than one post for somebody to get to understand your voice and your feel. Give them some things to click around on. When you launch a new blog, your click-through rate is probably going to be through the floor if <laughs> there's nothing else you're going to click on. So I recommend when the blog is actually launched, have at least five things up for them to read and then have some things in your back pocket. So when your blog launches that first month, you can spend that first month promoting, networking, marketing, and you're already having content out of posting on a weekly basis because you've already created a library of content. This is just my recommendation. I do recommend at least having five things up so they can get a feel of your voice, but if you can write more than that, it'll save you some time and headache because the worst thing that can happen for someone that's new in the game is to have to produce content and figure out how to market it at the exact same time. Can I ask a question or yeah, is that no cut you off? All right, back on that point, like so, one of the things I'm doing is like a like a sixty day challenge where mm -hmm. I write about the experience of building a game from start to awesome. finish. Would you consider that individual post, or is that more of like an overall like one post as like this is a sixty day challenge? So sixty day challenge is the blog. Well, the, no, the blog is uh, the introvert artist. Mm -hmm. So one of the like challenges that I'm going to do is because there are a lot of artists who try to build games and they run into like, roadblocks with it. Yeah. So I'm trying to build one from start to finish and blog about my experience. I think that's dope. I wouldn't do day one as the first blog. Okay. I do a couple of introductory posts. So one thing I did last summer when I rebranded is I did a 31 days of blog of branding challenge, but I used my blog post to promote it. So I had like a this is coming blog post so sign up here. So I used it I use it as a way to build an email list. Um, and then I did, well, hey, here's links to get the challenge materials if you miss this. And so for you it may not yours is gonna be a written thing, it's not necessarily an email challenge, but maybe your first post is an introductory introduction to who you are, what people can expect. Okay. Maybe the second one could be the why behind your blog. So you've noticed this challenge and here's what I'm looking to do for it. Um, your next post can maybe be give them an idea of the structure or or what kind of game they're looking to build, and kind of get them hyped so that they want to keep coming back day in, day in, day in to look at the content. So that's like three ideas right there, but I'm sure you can kind of pick some other other things within that to get the people excited, since it seems like you have a really good grasp on who you're targeting this blog to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, the next step is, of course, selecting your platform. There's plenty of workshops today on WordPress, so I think that's like the platform of choice. 
but people ask me ask me about that all the time too. I just recommend go with what feels good to you, go with what's easy for you, and go with, go with what's cost effective because ultimately you're the one that's going to have to use the system every day. So if you don't like it, you know you may not be inspired to use it. So just pick a platform that makes the most sense for you. And then the next piece, the final piece, is the brand. The brand colors, the name, the logo, the slogan, and hashtag. I put this last because most people spend a lot of time doing this and not a lot of time on, time on the first couple of steps. And then in my last three years as a blogger, I've seen a lot of gorgeous blogs come and die within three months. Just content stops because there was a lot of time and money put into this and not really investing in, do I even know what I'm talking about? Do I have enough content to keep people engaged? Do I even know who I'm talking to? This is the last part. And I think this part becomes easier once you're clear on your purpose and who you're marketing towards. So coming up with those brand colors, as we know colors have meaning. So if you know that you're trying to target women between the ages of 21 and 29 who are you know, new in corporate America, then you're probably going to pick more feminine colors, um, maybe mix it with a little bit of bold. Um, you'll know what your content is about to come up with your name, get a logo created, a slogan, um, and then of course the official hashtag. And I say the official hashtag because you want something that people can use when they want to brag about you or share. So my hashtag is her movement. Her movement everywhere, over everything. Anytime someone's using that, I know that it's about me. And that's something that you want for you. So yeah, you may use the, the hashtag OOTD for outfit of the day in your Instagram post, but you also want to use your official hashtag so people can actually go ahead and track you. Um, so an example, my blog is called Her Movement. My logo is on that pink bag. My slogan is for the busy bombshells of the world. And my hashtag is hashtag Her Movement. So you want to make sure you have all of that stuff because you want to give people an easy way to track you, find you, and, talk, and write about you. So let's get into the essential items for your blog. Um, no matter, in my opinion, no matter what your blog is about or who your blog is geared towards, these are the things you must, must have. First, of course, is your about page, right? But we already wrote our blog, our blog description. So we, for the most part, have that. I recommend taking that blog description and then adding your authentic voice, meaning you making it more first person and as if you're talking to someone, right? So my about page is really a mix of my bio and my blog description in one. And that helps because I kind of add the why behind what I do, what I'm looking to accomplish, and some of the other things that I'm doing that add credibility to the blog and what I'm talking about. A start here page is an excellent idea if your blog is on multiple topics. So if you are deciding to take that leap and blog about four or five different things, give some people some place to start so they don't feel overwhelmed make it to your website. So I have a start here page and it says, you know, hey, I'm your one-stop shop for all things careers, brand, and lifestyle. Um, here's some blog posts to get you started. Here's some free resources. Here's a link to my podcast. Here's a link to um, my YouTube, um, my Periscope every Sunday night, and kind of giving them just a one-stop shop where I'm explaining everything that's available, how to find it, and some of my best, highest quality, like highest rated content on that page to grip them early, okay? A contact page or email address because people will want to contact you. People will contact you with questions, with comments, and one thing that keeps me going when it comes to staying motivated with blogging is people will email me all the time of very touching and heartfelt stories about how something that I wrote or did helped them or inspired them. So they give people access to you and then people will also email you with opportunities to get paid. So sponsorship opportunities and collaborations, you want easy access to that. You also want some kind of mailing list opt-in. The join my free newsletter no longer works anymore because everybody's sending emails. So you have to give people something to entice them. So think about what your expertise is and what can you create to entice them. So example for me, sign up on my mailing list to get instant access to the 31 days of branding challenge. Sign up to get this free worksheet on launching your first blog. Create some kind of freebie incentive and build the mailing list. Why? Because whenever you decide to monetize your blog, whenever that is, you need access to the people that are engaged with you. If social media shuts down today and your blog and your business is going to go under, that's a problem. You want another way to get in touch with your followers and your readers to let them know there's new content, new products, or whatever it is you're looking to do. Of course, you want professional compelling images. 
Um, if you haven't invested in a professional photo shoot or headshots or anything like that, I highly recommend it. If you have a friend that's starting to play with cameras and they want some practice, volunteer for that. I've done that a couple times with some free images. Um, I have recommendations if you need a photographer. Um, and then even if your blog is like you don't want yourself to be up front, um, just even investing in quality stock photos. So all of these pictures that you're seeing behind the words are all stock photos. I did not take these pictures. And there's a lot of websites out here that you can purchase stock photos. But you just want your blog to have an element of professional appeal. And if you're taking pictures yourself, an iPhone will go a long way. Um, there's plenty of apps you can use like Visco Cam, uh, words like other things like that. But just again, you don't want it to look like an iPhone photo. So that means it's going to take a little bit of time and some good lighting. And then lastly, our social media links. You'd be surprised how many websites have broken social media links or links that take you to like WordPress.com because they didn't update the link when they when they used their template. Make sure your social media links are up and working. So let's talk about consistency. In my opinion, consistency is the biggest factor in success when it comes to your blog. Whoever is consistently present, consistently in your face, and consistently producing value wins. That's how you become the expert and the influencer and the go-to, because you're consistently there. I'm actually recording a podcast called The 10 Mistakes New Entrepreneurs Make, and one of those is not capitalizing on your momentum. So you're, you have a post that goes viral, an event that sells out, a product that went crazy, and you have nothing else to put out. So now you're going to, again, no longer be top of mind. So what I have here is a screenshot of a content calendar that I use. I made it myself. Um, I, I need things to be pretty in order for me to like them. So if you see all this pink. And I couldn't get the entire thing on the screen. But this is just what works for me. So I write on a weekly basis because I produce a lot of other content. So I'm on Periscope, I'm on a podcast, I'm on YouTube. So I'm only writing once a week. Um, so I have themed months to make my content production easier. My topics came from my readers. I did a reader survey. So all of the topics came from them. So here, week one through four, I put what I was writing about each week, and then what my email newsletter was going to be about, the monthly Twitter chat corresponds with the topic, and then to the right of that, there's a category for podcasts and a, pod and a category for what it is I'm selling. So I sell digital products and services. So I sell workbooks, ebooks, video email courses, and of course coaching services. So ideally my content is leading up to whatever it is I'm selling, if that makes sense. So I created a content calendar that works for me. If you're a daily blogger or bi-weekly, you can probably add more categories to this. But the point being there's a lot of free templates online for content calendars. Download it and customize it to your use, but live live by it. The content calendar saves your life and it makes it easier to use social media management tools like Buffer or Hootsuite to make sure that you're consistently present in social media. So I've been tweeting the entire time that I've been here, but I haven't really been tweeting. Buffer's been tweeting for me. So again, I'm still in front of my audience, still consistent, still producing, but I'm not really producing, if that makes sense. Any questions on this? All right, so let's talk about gaining expo exposure. So one of the big questions when it comes to being a new blogger is, how do I get followers? How do I get clicks? How do I get noticed? And there's a couple of avenues that you can take. Everything that I put on here are things that I actually do. So number one, guest blogging. Guest blogging is very effective when you know who your audience is. You know your audience is, you know what they're reading, which means get in front of them. So I've guest blogs for a site called YFS, YFS Magazine. It's young, fabulous, and self-employed. It's for emerging entrepreneurs. I've guest blogged for a site called exonicole.com, which is like a fashion lifestyle site. Um, I've guest blogged for flavity.com, which is like a... It's like a lifestyle site for uh, urban millennials and things of that nature. So I kind of know where my audience is and what they like because I follow them on social media, of course. So I'm seeing what they're posting and I'm writing content for those things, for those sites. The trick is I, when I guest blog, I typically guest blog about the same type of topic so that I'm building my expertise as a branding I'm really my influence as a branding expert. So everything that I write for other people is always something branding. It's not really blog stuff that I write about. Of course, I'm typically doing that branding piece because that's where I want my influence to be. So I kind of have a signature topic just like you would have a signature talk if you're a professional speaker. The next piece is Twitter chats. Twitter chats is how I built, built my Twitter following so fast. Um, so finding Twitter chats that relate to your niche and your expertise 
and they participated in those. Facebook groups, if you've been on Facebook, sharing your content in Facebook groups, but also being active in discussions, because if you can hop in discussions and answer someone's questions, provide quick solutions, again, you're the expert. Another piece is learning how to write copy. So copy is essentially the text you're using to share your content. So if you're sharing your blog post, you don't want to use the same title every time you tweet it. So if your blog is about um, 10 mistakes some entrepreneurs make, I may say that the first time. And then I, the next tweet may say, are you new in business? Here's a quick list of mistakes you want to avoid. Um, are you an emerging entrepreneur? Here's some things you can learn from me. And kind of switching it up every time so it looks like new content, but it's still the same thing. Learning how to write copy will save you a lot of time when it comes to promoting because if you know your audience, you know what words engage them and you know how to get their attention. The next piece is getting quoted. So I've been quoted in Fast Company a couple of times, um, which is really easy because I have to just provide literally a quote. You don't have to actually write the entire post. Um, but I typically get quoted on things related to branding as well. So a way to find out how do you get quoted in big publications is to use a website called hero.org.com. And it stands for Help a Reporter Out. So if you just Google Help a Reporter Out, it'll come up. And you subscribe to their um, daily digest and check out the topics you're interested in. And they'll send you an email. I get it like three times a day. And they'll just send you an email with curated um, pitches of journalists who are looking for quotes on certain topics. So it'll say, Fast Company is looking to interview someone that has experience with taxes as a small business or someone else on who uses social media to find a job. And then you can now email that, that direct journalist with your bio, your pitch, your quote, and then get quoted. And so now you're putting yourself out in front of that audience. And so that's a really good free resource that you can use to get yourself out there. And then lastly, collaborations. Collaborations with fellow bloggers is really, really helpful. So I wanted to give you a quick, some quick tips on how to have collaborations. Um, when you're considering opportunities, you want to think about what needs do you, does your audience have that you may not necessarily be able to fill and who can fill that gap. Right, so that helps with the pitch, and then from there, you're able to determine. You're able to say in that email to that person, "Here's the value that if that you would gain from working with me. Here's the value that my audience will gain from hearing from you." So that way, you're not necessarily saying, "Please just help me out," but that one's mutually beneficial. Um, you want to set up an informational call. So I'll typically, how I do partnerships if it's someone I don't know, I'll send them an email. I'll tweet them or comment on their Instagram and they'll know that I sent an email so that can kind of guarantee a reply. Um, from there, set up a quick phone call and kind of talk through it because I think that voice and that touch point adds an extra layer of, of trust. Um, work out the collaboration and then lastly, always get paperwork. Always, always, always. If you're like working together on like a sale or a pitch or anything like that, um, you want to make sure that you're documenting everything. You can use a free website called docracy.com, D-O-C-R-A-C-Y.com. And it essentially allows you to create electronic contracts. You can both sign electronically, or you can add multiple people. And then once everyone signs, you download it as a PDF, and everyone has the contract. If you have no experience writing contracts, they have a free database of templates that you can copy text from if you've never done that before. It's a completely free resource, and it's very a very professional and uh, chic-looking tool as well to be free. But paperwork will save you trouble in the long run. So I want to pause and see... Questions on collaborations, influence, anything like that? Okay, I'm, just, I'm sorry. No, I, you're I, fine. I came in right in the middle. <laughs> so, so, obviously, the, I guess the name of the game is try messaging either on Twitter or through email to, you know, to try to collaborations with, yeah. I guess, bloggers with similar interests. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so, like, this is, um, uh, I would say, like, a basic level of influencer marketing. So influencer marketing is the trend that with big companies nowadays, and that's when they are paying the YouTubers and the uh, bloggers with millions of followers to market their products and ads. This is, like, on the lower level, because you're trying to get another blogger to market you to their audience, and so you kind of... You're like looking to just cross promote essentially, um, but I prefer cross promotion in terms of we're both producing something as opposed to I know some people will do like a loop giveaway on Instagram like oh follow me on Instagram to win this giveaway then they unfollow you at the end because you didn't really provide any value for them they just followed you to win a prize but if you're doing collaborative blog posts or interviews or videos or I, I typically do joint webinars or I'll have people 
um, be guests in my Twitter chat. That's my collaboration opportunities. Um, I find that those prove to be more beneficial because everybody's bringing something to the table and we're kind of keeping the followers. So the numbers don't really matter if the followers aren't engaged. Um, and then I wanted to, to kind of wrap it up with some sponsored posts. I want to talk to you about how do you get paid with blogging. Um, and so I wanted to give a couple of options. So of course the first and easiest one is to pitch media and marketing companies. So those are the companies that, uh, let me see, like, what are some, what are some names? Uh, Thomason's is one, Influencer is one, where they partner with, with bloggers, they partner with companies, and they kind of match you together based on fit and all of that stuff, and they give you opportunities to uh, work with them. You can pitch businesses yourself, so you can kind of pitch the brands you're interested in. I know this is, for bloggers starting out, this is way more effective for small businesses um, than it is for maybe some of the larger companies, and so that, that's one way of making money. Um, and if you do decide to go the pitch route where, hey, I'm going to ask you, can I market this product, can I market this event, um, you want to create a media kit for your blog. A media kit, uh, there's a lot of templates that you can use for, but in essence, it describes your blog and audience, the audience. The biggest piece for, for getting paid is to know exactly who your audience is because that's going to tell that business that they want to work with you. Um, and then have your stats, your followers, your website visits, email subscribers, clout scores. And again, your follower number, it is not very high. That doesn't mean you won't get paid because, again, they're going to ask you about engagement. Are you getting clicks? Are you getting comments? If you have a call to action in your blog or in your Instagram, people doing what you ask them to do, um, that has so much more weight. Of course, in your social media kit, you want to include your social media links and content information. Something else that I include in mine is logos of who, I've, who else I've already worked with. So if you have any experience already, those logos, um, and then even some sample content. And then I know some people say, well, okay, so I pitched them. How do you, how do I get the money? Well, there's two ways. They'll either pay you up front and like a lump sum, like I'll give you $100 for this post. Or they'll have a referral fee. So I'm working with someone right now on a campaign where anytime someone buy, uses my code to buy a t-shirt, I get 8% of that purchase. So it's like affiliate marketing, essentially. Um, but just using, you know, that's just a referral fee because I sent them to that to her site. They paid for it using the code, and there it is. So those are two ways to get paid from um, businesses. And then another option of getting paid for blogging is... Um, Actually, number one, this. Number two, selling your own products. So selling your own product or services. So something as simple as a t-shirt, right, with your logo on it, or a cute phrase, coffee mugs, bags. Um, if you create virtual, probably an hour-long e-course on how to um, launch a blog, and then you can resell that for like $10, $20, like that's another way of making money. So a lot of bloggers are going the route of launching businesses in order to monetize. So that's another option as well. So that was the presentation on launching a blog, on branding, and on monetizing. So I wanted to spend some time turning it over to you and asking you about challenges that you have or have had when it comes to launching your blog or being consistent or producing your content. This is I'm completely new to writing a blog. And do you have any examples of blogs I could see or... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Do you know what you want your blog to be about? Yes. What do you want to do about? Blogos. <laughs> <laughs> I am your number one fan. <laughs> I will picture you on my blog. <laughs> well, of course I can show you mine to start okay. off with. Yes. This is my blog. Welcome to her movement. Um, instant pop-up. You know, get access to my branding library. So I have a back backdoor branding library that has a bunch of free worksheets. One of which is my content calendar. Um, and then also give people a discount code. So that's like the first option to sign up. And if you don't want to do it there, there's a reminder at the bottom of the screen that you can get an instant access to this branding challenge. So this is another way of getting people enti enticed. These social media links will follow you as you scroll down. And then there's a link to the Start Here page that I talked to you about. I have some of the logos of where I've been featured to kind of and get it enticed people. But I have to do this because I'm writing about topics that require credibility. How, who am I to tell you how to navigate your career or build your brand if I haven't done it myself? So that's why that's there. Quick intro, and then a link to the about page, um, a link to the blog, my podcast, 
a link to the shop, a, a reminder about my upcoming Twitter chat. So this always is there because the Twitter chat is only once a month. And then that's the end of the page. And then the picture. So I did a photo shoot where the photographer actually gave me my own stock photos. Even my stock photos kind of have their own style and their own feel. And then at the end, my email address, a way to connect with me, and another opportunity to get on the middle list of none of the above as it text you before. Then I'll go back up and show you the Star Hair page so you can see what I was talking about. So this is the quick paragraph intro, like your one-stop shop for everything careers, brand new lifestyle. I tell them exactly what I'm going to post. I post every Tuesday. If I post more than that, then you're blessed. If I don't, you already know, Tuesdays. Um, I encourage you to check out my blogs, videos, podcasts, Periscope. Another opportunity to get on the mailing list, like a reminder. Hey, you can get these free worksheets here. Um, if you want advanced help, check out the store. Um, if you're looking for me live, here's where I speak. And then I have links to popular blog posts. So a couple of those. Another link to the challenge. And then this is a link to a paid kit. So this is a 41-page workbook that you can like type in and say that you can print it that I make for people because I found that my audience was asking me a lot of my like how do you like master my questions how do you actually like brainstorm and produce and organize your emails and your blogs and all of that so I just kind of took my, my journal and made it into an ebook um, so this is a star here page and then the other thing I'll show you and you can ask if you want to see anything else is just what the blog itself looks like so when you hover over blog, the drop down careers, branding, and lifestyle pops up. So if you are only here for career stuff, you can just click that and it'll just filter it. As opposed to this is really the main page. So what else can I show you? Do you still do you still do your nine to five? Mm -hmm. So with your blog, like your calendar, how do you how do you manage all of that? <laughs> That's my biggest problem right now. You yourself. Um, it's, it, it's taken a while. When I first started, I really struggled with that um, a couple years ago. But now, I batch produce. So um, that means I spend like an allotted number of hours just doing one thing. So the reason why that content calendar is, is clutch is because I plan a quarter out. So this month's blog posts were already done. Well, not this month. This month was a reader's choice month, so it wasn't. But like July was already done. June was already written. So it's more of like I just sit down and batch producers I already know what's coming up. And then I schedule it to be posted. I do get guest bloggers. So if they submit things and I'll kind of have a lot of time to kind of schedule their stuff. There was one month when I knew my life was going to be overwhelming. So I just, I intentionally advertised for guest bloggers. And for one month, my blog was completely written by other people. So I also outsource if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I do. I, social, I schedule social media one week in advance. Um, but batch scheduling has helped. Um, typically I do it on the weekends or late nights. But figuring out when are you the most productive Capitalizing on that time and batch scheduling um, are my two bigger takeaways. And then, of course, you know, iPhone calendar planners. Um, because I do coaching and consulting, a lot of that is over the phone. So people can book calls with me, um, and that automatically syncs to my phone, too. So I don't have to worry about double booking myself. But I do have, for some more in-depth stuff, I do have a podcast episode on that. My podcast is about the Bombshell Diaries, so I do. And I have an episode on that. Um, and that was one that I got a lot of emails, like that was one of the realer, <laughs> realest podcasts I've heard, because I just really was like, discipline, and then all of this other strategy, because you don't have the discipline and the strategies for that. What else can I tell you about blogging? Well, okay, well, I've been blogging for six years, and, you know, I'm never sure exactly, I like, you know, like, obviously, you're, I mean, I see your blogging very aesthetically pleasing. You know, I mean, maybe mine's more content heavy, and you know, I'm the, well, actually I blog about statistics, and you know, trying to use statistics to explain things in everyday life, and you know, I'm just trying to get the, you know, you know, just trying, you know, trying to, you know, I feel like I can always, always use more. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
Uh, my blog is aesthetically pleasing because it has to be, meaning my audience, people that I want to read it, they're all, they, they need something to look at, kind of, in order for them to be engaged in the content. So I don't think that the aesthetics versus content is a trade-off. I think, for me, I need both. Um, so I learned how to write in a way where I'm still teaching, but I'm also concise because my audience is millennial and we don't have a long attention span. So we have to get in, get the information we need, get out. Um, when it comes to traffic, um, again, I've relied heavily on social media and getting guest blogging and interviews. So if I can get my name and face in as many other places that my audience is frequenting, the better. Um, even if you get interviewed on podcasts, make sure you consistently drop in that website, right? <laughs> if you're interviewing, if you're doing a web interview, consistently, one thing that I do, if I, someone interviews me on their blog, I include at least two or three hyperlinks to my blog, like specific articles, not just this time with .com, but very specific articles. But then my own blogs, there needs to be at least one link to a different article on my website because I don't even just come get, with the, get that one thing and leave. I want to keep them there, keep them flowing, because a lot of times you may get a lot of hits on that one post and then one of us people never came back. But did you give them something else to go to or look to? Did you give them as many opportunities to get on the email list to kind of keep them coming back? Um, and then one thing I do too, especially if I produce a lot of content in one week, I'll do it in case you missed an email to my subscribers and say, in case you missed it, and just the links to whatever was produced this week. Um, and that also helps, kind of just like a, a one con condensed email um, also has helped with traffic. So I hope that answers the question if you want to get more yeah. deep. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, w I, I was able to, I did get interviewed on a podcast, and I did name drop my, my blog, and I, have a, I know it's kind of a strange name for it, I call it, I, t I tell people being a statistician, kind of like CSI with all the dead bodies, so that's the name <laughs> of my blog, I'm trying to be tongue in cheek with it, I think CSI that's without it. dead bodies. <laughs> Yeah, and then I think one thing too is like, so you did that guest interview, pitch yourself for other opportunities to do that. Yeah. Right, because I know, I know, especially like there's times when people, all people may seem to reach out to you with opportunities, well, getting comfortable pitching yourself yeah. for opportunities, especially if you know and to show that you're, that people that, people that, that would be interested in your content listens to, pitching yourself and kind of in that email providing, this is the value your audience is giving them. And again, making it about the person you're reaching out to, and it doesn't help to attach that media kit and say, and I mean, and I'm going to bring followers to you because I'm going to tell my readers that I was on your blog and link that. And so now you're going to get exposure to 10,000 people, 15,000 people. So, no problem. So can you tell, uh, you don't have to give us the exact number, but can you tell us like how, how like are you making enough money blogging that you could quit your nine to five, or is it like not yet. Okay. I'm not yet. I'm very honest on that. So I did. I would have quit already. <laughs> um, but my goal actually isn't even to make my whole time money blogging. My goal was to do my business full time. So I, I did bring this little slider if you guys don't want. I actually had these printed for my summit. Um, I want to make my money doing this. So this is what okay. I love. I love talking to people one on one about their brand. I like. To your point about like aesthetics, I like working with people to create mood boards for their brands. So kind of like just an image that summarizes all of the brands we talked about, like your brand colors, your logos, your fonts, about your artists. I like helping helping people kind of discover the power of what they can do. That's okay. my ultimate goal. So as much speaking and webinars, workshops that I can offer, the better. But it is nice to get that PayPal notification that you're there during the day. Just saying. <laughs> so. Anything else? Well, if not, feel free to reach out, connect with me. I definitely answer my emails all the time. Um, we have a little bit of extra time for lunch. It is even for my pop in, so I think we're probably in right when anyone else is. But thank you for listening. I do have another question. Those images that you had on your website, are you going through Pinterest to create those, or are you just making those? No, those are all mine. Those are all yours? Those right? are my images. So the images in this presentation are stock photos from someone from createherstock.com, mm -hmm. and then others are from death to stock photo.com. Uh, the thing with 
people flaunt through Pinterest is like, those are other people's images, so you can get sued for using that. Especially if you make money off the post that you use it for, they can sue you for that. Well, I'm, I'm saying like the way that you, like the way that image looks right there, yes. are you, yeah, are you using stock photo? That's all stock photo? Stock photo. So, so you're doing that for, in post? So yeah, so these images are stock photos. So they have no copyright on them, so I have the legal right to use them. But like, for example, um, like that image, those, that's me. This image at the bottom, like this is my photo from my photo shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like those are my flowers. Um, so the images on my website are intentionally, like the light, the layout photos, these are all photos that I own. These are mine. But the photos within my blog are stock photos. Like this is a stock photo. So I'm very cautious to make sure that I use photos that have no copyright, no claim. And then to read in the fine print, because there are some copy some stock photo websites where you can use a photo on your blog, but you can't use it to make money. Mm -hmm. So if your blog is sponsored or advertisements, then you can't use it. You have to give credit. So mm -hmm. just making sure you read that fine print, which is why I recommend if you can invest in a photo shoot with a photographer like what I had that will set up a room or a space to be your brand and your aesthetics, they'll take stock photos for you. You know, the phone and your laptop, your iPad, your notebook, your gaming system. And then you just have a library that you can use. So on Instagram too, I primarily use my stock photos. 